my name is Daniel Norton and welcome to the third edition of the podcast. Today we welcome club legend and four-time McGarry medalist Russ Lever to share his thoughts on uh, some of the great players that he's played with over his career. I know there's just so many and it's hard to compare different eras, but Russell, thanks for joining us and, uh, and thanks for speaking to us today about which players stand out for you and why over your career. It must be a very, very difficult thing to talk about. Thanks, Norts. Uh Yes, it is, because you try and, well, I rarely try and compare players in different eras because uh, the players are always uh, good enough, I believe, to adjust to the tempo of the day, whether that's mm. the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, or even uh, in the 2000s. So I generally just try to isolate them as the players of their time. Mm -hmm. And coming into the port side in 1968, it was a very experienced side, and there were players there that had uh, won multiple premierships, represented the state, yep. won best and fairest, and were probably a few of them coming to the end of their career. And so it was difficult to, to then judge them against yep. players in the, the 70s and, and the 80s. When but, it was a redevelopment type squad yeah. and, and, you, and you built from the youth up. But to come into a side, uh, I really believe that, uh, that John Cale was one of our best leaders and he was uh, an inspirational player. Uh, he played with injury. He played in a number of different positions mm. and he played for such a long time mm. and uh, not a great deal of injuries. So when you talk about uh, influential players, mm. uh, I believe uh, John was, was one of those and had the good fortune of playing with him for, for six years, even though the last couple he did have some injuries. But um, he was very influential in that same team. We had Ron Elloway and Bubbles Obst, yep. Trevor Obst. Yep. So you might um, you might try and compare those those players. But um, uh, Greg Phillips was at centre half back, and and he was probably the the best centre half back for not only his ability to stop the play, but uh, also to beat an opponent if he had to. But then also the rebound mm -hmm. and. Um, when you look at the modern game, a lot of their attacks are started from half back. And when you had uh, Tony Giles, Martin Leslie, Greg Phillips across that half back line, you not only stopped the opposition from going forward, but they gave us tremendous rebound. And on the end of those kicks were, were Tim Evans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at a later date, Scott Hodges. Yes. So both of them 100, 100 goal a season players. Yeah. And. Uh, truly influential players in their day. Uh, Brian Cunningham, uh, Jeff Potter, Darrell Cale, Tim Ginova yep. were players who played in that roving, roving position. And Brian was the best two-sided player that I'd seen. Well, what was his natural kick, left or right? He was a right footer. He was a right footer. And he footer. could wheel onto the left at... Uh, he could he even wheel. sometimes have set shots for goal. Amazing to open up the angle. Left side. So he was he was a terrific player, premiership captain, and just a sensational player. Darrell Kyle was probably uh, a player that they didn't quite know where he played his best footy because mm. he played well in all the positions. He was a fantastic halfback flanker. Mm. He was a terrific wingman. He would go up forward and kick goals with those long arms, yeah. he'd take marks, and then he, he had just the ultimate courage to go in and get the ball. Jeff Potter was in the side when I came in in 68 and was just uh, hard at it, head over the, the ball and uh, was just a, a sensational player. You mentioned so many great players there, Russell, of course, and uh, look, if we pick a couple out just for, for some of the younger listeners to this podcast who may not have, have had the pleasure of watching some of these players in action, uh, let's go back to John Cale. I mean, what made him such a a magnificent player. I know you mentioned his leadership and his ability to, 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 to play so many games, injury free, but was it his skill level or? I think uh, above all else was it was his football courage. He would go into any any contest and he would meet, win most of them against all opponents and then he had a magnificent kick, a left foot uh, drop punt or a screw punt if he was a little bit mm. further out, but he could uh, pinpoint a pass after winning the ball and then he could kick a goal and he'd kick important goals so yeah. he was just um, a terrific player but I, I think it was uh, his his courage to get the ball his uh, courage to play with injuries yes. and his ability to uh, to inspire and and lead 
yep. that uh, makes him a standout player. You mentioned Brian Cunningham, of course, already in terms of such a great two-sided player and probably had exactly uh, similar traits as John Cale. Greg Phillips, you mentioned, uh, what a champion he was and, and so athletic and, and we remember him as being a big, strong center back towards the end of his career, but he was just such an athlete too in the early days throughout the late 70s and so forth before he went over to Collingwood. Who would you compare him to in the in the modern AFL game? Just a question without notice, just for our, our younger listeners to think, well, oh, who would you compare him to? Probably a few years ago, uh, I, I watched the competition between Glenn Jakovic and Wayne Carey. Mm. And uh, uh, Glenn Jakovic was really beaten, and, mm. and Greg was the same type of player. Uh, I also look at Jonathan Brown, mm. because uh, he was a, a country boy, big and strong, attacked the ball, did inspirational things, kicked important goals, did a lot of defensive work. So Greg used to do that too. Mm. He, he could go up forward and take a mark and, and kick an important goal. So probably um, Jakovic comes to mind because he wasn't afraid to attack either yeah. from that half back line. He knew his job to defend and stop an opponent, uh, but he also had that uh, skill and flair and initiative to create a lot of attacks from that half back line. Of course, Greg had that sweeping left hand handball as well, where he could uh, handball at 30 metres longer than some other people can kick as well. So he was a. Uh, he actually um, broke his leg when he was 15. He, he was a natural left footer. Right. And uh, so he had all those left foot, uh, left sided strengths. And he broke his leg when he was 15, and he had his left leg in plaster. So, right. he, so he started to prop himself up on his left leg plaster and kick right leg. Amazing. So uh, when he, he came in, uh, he was a, a terrific right foot, he was magnificent left foot, uh, but he, he used to bounce the ball left-handed and he would handball left-handed, which allowed him to go both ways and be more than adequate on both sides of his body, which when he first came into the competition, not too many players were adept at, uh, at those skills. So he, he was a, a, a great player. You had the pleasure of, you mentioned, coaching and uh, and also playing with both Greg Anderson and, and Craig Bradley. Um, they both had very similar traits, didn't they? Skillful, fast, explosive, um, amazing. Well, they were, and uh, Craig Bradley was one of those players that uh, didn't do a lot of pre-season because he had state cricket commitments mm. and, and, and cricket. And Greg was uh, a fantastic athlete. He was a 400-metre hurdler and held the state record. Uh, in fact, um, the, the person that beat him in that gruelling event was Paul Northeast. Okay. Took his took his state record uh, from Greg Anderson. So he had those powerful legs. He was uh, six foot two mm -hmm. in the old money. Uh, he could go up forward. I often slipped him up forward because he'd take a really good mark and and kick goals. Beautiful kick. Yeah. So he would have been a sensational centre half forward or full forward. But of course, he made his name across the the wing with. Um, with Craig Bradley coming in in, uh, in the 1980s and I think from memory he won three best and fairest mm. uh, in about four or five years when he first came into the side and then went to Carlton. So how do you split Craig Bradley, Bruce Light, Greg Anderson for uh, influential players with uh, skill with fitness with uh, aggression and courage yeah one of the one of the burning questions that this football club's always been i mean and, and it's so hard to pick who the better full forward was and you mentioned the two tim evans and and scott hodges and i don't think you can pick who was the best one because they had slightly different traits timmy was just such a, an unbelievable kick at goal and was a confidence player as you would know and and Scotty could just do the absolute uh, miracle stuff, mm. the impossible. So um, how would you compare those two? Well, Timmy came over actually as a centre-half back yeah. and from Geelong. And uh, Bob McLean got him over and uh, wanted him to play. But then there was an opportunity at full forward. And uh, I've always believed that a centre-half back and full forward are, are quite similar. Okay. You get the ball coming in. And, uh, and Timmy went to full forward and became just uh, one of our most successful players. Um, kicked a lot of goals. Scotty Hodges was coming in just at the end of, of my playing career mm. and uh, he came in and he was a terrific ruck rover, midfield type player. Okay. But then as he developed and filled out, uh, he took over uh, the, the full forward spot and kicked a magnificent number of goals and kicked a lot of goals quickly in games too. He could kick five or six goals in a quarter because he could reach the goals from 50, 60 metres out, mm. which uh, even today uh, not many players can regularly kick those long, important goals from outside of 50. Scotty did it on a regular basis, and Tim was such an accurate kick and such a dominant player when the ball was in, in his area. What about a couple of the characters you played with? And, and we remember them for being characters for, for what they did on and off the field, but 
we sometimes forget how good they were and I refer to Bomber Clifford, Stephen Clifford and, and of course David Granger as well if we start off with Bomber and I think he won three best and fairest as well just like Craig Bradley, tell us yeah, about him. Stephen uh, won three best and fairest, he was an elusive player, um, one of the best at uh, getting the ball in a pack but also the modern day they call it uh, spreading. Well, Bomber used to spread so far that no one had ever been near him, and so <laughs> opponents didn't know where he was, and we'd get the ball out to him because we knew Bomber was there. But it wasn't just because he was uh, bludging and and going forward. He just had that knack of reading the play yeah. and going to where the ball was going to be, which was just a sensational skill to have. And three best and fairest, and we won multiple premierships through that time when he won the best and mm -hmm. fairest. So he was a super player, along with Mark Williams. Uh, yeah. Paul Belton was another player that doesn't get a lot of mentions, but very, very skillful player on both sides of his body. And Mark Williams, of course, a premiership player with uh, the Port Magpies, and then, of course, went on to have a career with um, Collingwood, um, the Bears, and, and then came back to, to Port Adelaide. So just uh, super players, aggressive. And then when you look up forward with Timmy Evans and Scott Hodges, I believe David Granger was one of the best five centre-half forwards. Uh, I've, I've ever seen as a pure centre half forward because he was he was tall, he was strong, uh, he was fearless with his attack at the ball. He could kick goals from from any angle mm. and anywhere. Very very uh, adequate on his left side. He had a brilliant left hand handball that he could uh, give short or or long. And then Randall Gurley, of course, uh, one of, another one of my favourite players, uh, centre half forward or full forward or in the pocket. Premiership player and played under adversity with kidney problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, Randall and, and David, along with Tim, were probably the um, the most most influential forwards that uh, uh, I sort of played with through uh, through those uh, Premiership years. Randall, of course, retired after the '77 Grand Final. Yes, he got yeah. that uh, Premiership that he so uh, longed for. Uh, do you think David Granger and Bomber Clifford are, are misunderstood or, or um, un underrated? because of, of their colourful ways? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, that's why uh, I, uh, I classify David uh, in that category. And uh, you can put in any centre-half forward and, and you m match it against what David could do, the influence he had on a game, etc. But of course, the notoriety uh, overshadowed a lot of the, the, uh, the super play that he did and the number of times that that he would sacrifice his own game, he would do the ruck work in the forward line and he wasn't a, a, a six foot four, six no. foot five type player. And so, uh, yeah, he was, uh, uh, his value was always appreciated by the players around him because he made space for people, he gave the ball out, fantastic courage and terrific skill. And Bomber, of course, was, was the joker, the character, everyone wanted to, uh, uh, to get stuck into Bomber and he gave a bit back. Uh, his, his sledging was uh, just uh, famous <laughs> yeah. for what he would do, uh, but he'd always have the ball. That's so, right. And he'd Back point up. to the scoreboard or he'd look at his best and fairest or the premierships and, and Bomber had all the answers, but he was a super player too. Now, I remember two incidents out of the 81 grand final. I think uh, you talked about Granger's left handed handball, the one that set you up for a goal, mm -hmm. I think, down the southern end, that 20 metre handball. And Maybe of course, you took a reasonable player. <laughs> uh, you were reasonable. And then Bomber's 65 metre torpedo down to the, the northern end in the first quarter, which got the boys um, rolling on that day against Glenelg. So Bomber used to say that the, the ball's still going and it's passed over about four postcodes. <laughs> yeah, so you had to get a taxi yes. to get it back. Yes, Brilliant. Yes. Russ, thank you for joining us uh, on our third edition of the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure to share your thoughts uh, about some of the uh, the great players. We know how difficult it is to um, differentiate between the, the, the players across eras, but we thank you for getting up your time on the podcast and hopefully over the next maybe a little while we can talk to you about some other experiences like the 77 grand final and and, um, and some other experiences that you've had at the club. Problem is you miss out too many uh, really uh, good players uh, but enjoyed it and uh, yes maybe we'll do it again. Thanks Russell. Thanks North.